So let's just jump into game number one here. This is normal or KOTD? ECL, Arabia. Okay, a little bit more balanced. I believe it's also a no pawns variant. We have Melkor as the Persians, which is on Arabia, quite a decent sieve. And then we have Nikov, which on Arabia, opposed to Arena, is actually not a very good sieve. So we're going to watch this one sped up a little bit. Uh, talking about Arabia, Portuguese, they have, they have a lot of generic strategies. They could... Um, I think their bonus definitely does complement going archers, but usually it's something like man arms archers. Sometimes you'll see FC crossbows, that kind of thing, if you could pull off with a good enough map. Nico's map, not so great. I would say the gold is not too bad because this wood line is very, very thick. You can walk from here to here and maybe here. And it's just really not vulnerable. It's never too early to start drinking. So, you know, it's a lot of things you could do with Portuguese. I mean, if I was feeling like I didn't want to be risky, I would probably do something like open with scouts and then just full wall and then I decide whether to go to castle quite fast or not. Map is, as I said, it's not too bad. He does have a stone in the back and he can wall this off. Arabia is just arena, just DIY variant. Everyone always walls and booms. What do you expect? Persians, of course, they're usually just going to open scouts. You can do a lot of things. You could especially drush. You could FC. Drush FC even. Archers, maybe not the most common. I have seen them pulled on a few occasions in pro games, but... Ugh. What can you do? He's pushing some deer. Probably not too many. Oh no, he's pushing more deer. Laming doesn't happen all too much these days. I think um, even VH was saying it. It's simply just because it's less damage your scouting, it's less time to just push two deer than it is to lame an enemy boar. And sure it stops them from getting some scouting because they had to push a couple of deer but obviously it damages you in the long run as well. I mean persons are not that bad on Arabia, they're still very very nice. When it gets towards the late game of course but definitely opening game against lower civs like Portuguese could be really really strong to have their scouts. Especially their feudal boom. It's probably, um... Still makes them a very good early on sieve. 21 pop. Melkor used to like school scouts. He's not already on gold. Only two on the berries. Feels a little bit unusual. Four there. And five there. Yep, he's probably going to transition to archers, maybe? Unless he wants to do skirmishers. Skirmishers might be viable. See, so Samson quite long walling off here. Didn't get that woodline, but I guess this is fine. Quite a long wall off. He's looking... He's got some really ambitious walling here. Yeah. Whereas over here, Nikov coming with a drush. I should probably slow it down a bit, actually. I want to get through these games quick, but... He's still Dark Age, 30 pop. Melkor with the 3k quick walls. What can this rush do actually? After between here and the TC, absolutely nothing vulnerable for miles. And the berries, no chance. He's gonna have to go back around, maybe. Yeah, there's not really anything he can do except just try and make his way towards keeping Melkor off the gold for upping, maybe. I think the best thing he could do is maybe try and take engagement against the scouts that Melkor's making. At least kill a few before they get to his base. Nikov going to go feudal, maybe adding a spear. This is basically the Aerion version of Arabia. Taking the fight uphill though, not so good. Milker didn't even lose a scout. Didn't even really take much damage on the scouts. Half damage scout there, that's it. Deleting those quick walls. Quite a lot of resources here, quite a lot of food, able to click with the castle quite quickly. Archers here would be a problem, but of course Melkor did open scouts, so he won't have them yet. And yeah, this is quite well walled off against the um, any possible raid on the gold. Not too difficult to get to either, it's quite close, but at the same time it's, it's distant enough to prevent that kind of attack, but close enough to wall if he needs to. Range being added, about to clear up the castle. 
So it looks like he's probably going to go for crossbows during this fast castle. 17 minutes, not bad with a drush. Milker no range yet, three on gold. He is not adding additional scouts. He did add quite a lot. He does still have the three there, two there. He might as well get some decent map scouting. Nikov though, Nikov has better map scouting at the moment. So what's Melkor going to do? Did he manage to get a wheelbarrow? This Melkor, of course he hasn't. Oh shit, he actually got it. I was not expecting that. Lots of scouts though, he probably just assumes they rush FC because of the late up time. He needs to sort of figure out what he's going to do against crossbows. Level stable knights makes good sense. He's about to click up as well. Don't forget Persians have the bonus, the team bonus, plus two damage against archers. Nice little bonus that. I think it mostly comes into play later game, just like Paladins with certain amount of upgrades, Color Blast with certain amount of upgrades and one less hit. <laughs> These archers though, which are now crossbows, which now have Botkin Arrow. They're going to tear through the wall decently quick. I'm not entirely sure why he does not have at least a couple more. But it's fine either way. It's going to keep killing the scouts. The scouts are just going to keep trying to... Uh, Bully the crossbows in order to slow down the progress of this wall going down. But yeah, of course, this is not great. You don't want to lose your scouts to crossbows that easily. But they are proving quite helpful. He might be able to use them against monks later in the game if he does go knights. Still staying 1 TC, whereas we see 2 TCs for our Portuguese player. Portuguese have the worst economy than the Persians, but of course if you're running multiple TCs while having the aggressive standpoint, not bad. Alright, I'm back. So we see a no university yet, which is interesting, but we see a third TC coming up for Nikov. Nikov's in a very tight position though. So what we're going to see here, of course, the crossbows will do decent damage against knights in this many numbers. No problem. Melkor staying in one TC, I'm the second TC now on a decent gold, decent enough golden woodline, secure the back of his base. Front here is pretty all downhill though, and he doesn't really have access to stone, where's other stone? Uh, missing apparently, don't really care, that can't be it. Maybe I am just blind, but I do not see the second stone, unless he included it in a wall and I'm not seeing it. Oh, there is. Uh, yep, I'm blind, confirmed. That does not show on the minimap at all. Lots of knights, does he have plus two yet? No, he only has plus one bet to get plus two. Monk's been added, which of course really strong against the knights. Lots of crossbows, Maganil here. He does not scout the siege workshop. But now the Maganil scouts the monks. Milker notices, and he snipes the monks. And that is huge because the knights, they would be really vulnerable to the monks. And of course that would give Nikov good numbers to win the fight, but of course... He doesn't manage it. Still enough crossbows to defend though, Siege Workshop coming up. Still no university. There we go, uni for ballistics. One that gets converted and then used to kill the Mangano. Two TCs is the Persians, soon to be three, but two right now, it does definitely almost keep up with the three TC from the Portuguese. Person TC is working faster, nice little bonus. This knight is not going to go down. Oh, he is. There we go. But then the Magno goes down. Not, not a problem for Nikov, really. Person player on 3 TC, though, he's definitely going to have race in the economy, the Portuguese player, which is only just now getting wheelbarrow, which is definitely a lot later. A lot less food collected. I want to have a quick look to see where we are with that. Milko a lot more food collected, and of course he wasn't running as many farms for the same amount of time. A 
God, I need to stop coughing constantly. Monks are going to be a bit of a problem. Actually, now the Magnus is going to start cleaning them up. No sanctity. Ballistics finally coming in, though. The one Magnus and someone can actually deal with this. Oh, and two monks are one. And not a single conversion, lots of nice and well but look at the military accounts, we see 10 more military for Nikov. Oh, oh. That's three knights lost off the bat without getting a single attack in though, that's pretty huge. Maybe not the best engagement, but a couple of villagers are now going down. Malkor is actually coming quite ahead in the villager lead. Gonna lose the Maginel? Guess they shot him though, definitely takes down some of the military. Pretty decent trade there, he does have the fort, he does have a lot of Maginels here. Plus one, plus two. So the cross wasn't a problem, but the thing is the Maginel, so as long as he masses enough of them. Nikov has played a decent bit of arena in this time. Doesn't play it often or recently though. I do have Golden End versus Finor soon. And that should be a good matchup. Golden End is um oh. Golden End really does want to um play arena, but he says he doesn't think there's not many players, so I'll organize something for him. <clears throat> not a good Manganel trade there from Melkor, but it doesn't really matter too much. He might be able to get hit in here. Oh no. Two for nothing. Who is Golden End VS? Uh, they're supposed to play it unrated and in a closed lobby. Still the three TCs. Siege Watch has been added more Imperial Age as well as more crossbows about to come out. We're going to see our blast from Nikov. Our blast not exactly great against Persian cavalry. Melkor is about to click up. He looks like he's just about able to. He does have a four castle now. Nikov does not have a castle yet, but he'll be able to get one soon. He'll be able to get it fast enough to start attacking Melkor's castle. Melkor can't click up, but is he just going to queue up 100 more knights? He does that all the time. Lots of knights, though, he could do quite a lot with a lot of knights. Yeah, he's queuing up more knights. This is a little bit of a problem, of course. It is such a choke point, especially if Arblast and then Chemistry comes out. Then those knights are going to get shredded. But then as soon as Cavalier on plus 4 comes out, it comes back the other way. Melkor is, should be clicking up sometimes, and a lot more stables. Four TCs, especially one for taking a lot of Nikov's gold. Nikov also losing access to one of the relics they had. What's going to happen here? This castle is obviously going to go down because there's nothing like Trebuchet can not do about it. He does have chemistry, so he's going to get bomber cannons. He might get Archibus versions, but it might not be worth him investing into because he does want to probably transition into Halbs. He's finally got a bit of map control over the side of the map, so he could easily add some barracks now. Before, he didn't really move out here, didn't really have the control. But to be fair, a mass of knights or cavalier running right in here, that's a lot of dead units. Economy-wise, Melkor is two villagers ahead. They're kind of reaching the point of full boom each. Nico had more villagers, Melkor no longer. Lost of Blast here. Getting so many kills. Oh. That's that's not good. Melkor does definitely end up on the better side of that trade, but he did lose so much of his army. I don't know what he's planning. He could always go for Onager, but Onager might not work too well against the well, pretty much half the units that you can make as Portuguese. I think maybe Paladin will be the aim. To be fair, he does have his build skewed up quite a bit. He does have a lot of gold. He does have a decent farm economy. 42 farmers, not too bad. Lots of idols, but they're just up here. All those farms we spare and he's receding them. Now 54 farmers in total. Thanks for the uh, raid, Necro. 
so yeah, decent food economy. You can even four paladin at this point. He's not been making cavalier though. So overall, his army's just been a bit thin. I think maybe waiting for paladin might be a little bit stronger. He's finally getting husbandry though. Forty-three minute husbandry. Is that what you want? This is a wreck from the week. Max and Paladin Pocket? I don't know. But yeah, Paladin's gonna be quite strong here. He's not only getting conscription now, maybe a little bit on the late side. But of course, he did have to rebond on Castle. Probably not gonna see Organ Guns. I think we're just gonna stay straight hull. But I mean, he's now. Is enough barracks? He needs to add more though. Does he have a lot of room? And I suppose if he does start taking this map, he does need to start considering this corner. He does not know about this extra gold though, so that's probably part of the reasoning why. Melkor does definitely have better map scouting at this point. A lot more of the borders. Paladins, they definitely do trade you know, decently well against the Hobbiteers. You kill them quite easily if they have quite low numbers. Our blasts are actually getting a decent amount of kills, especially sitting under the castles though, with the Paladins. Probably not the best trade for Melkor though. Melkor's actually trying to take this corner as well, if you uh, watch Stark. Stark always says take the corners. So Melkor owns this corner, this corner, and this corner. Nikov only owns this one. And that's pitching a very um, positional advantage. Whether it's true or not, maybe not, but of course he's still walls. That's when you know it's a good game. I never cast Arabia because it's such a clown map. But um, this is my usual arena cast stream. This could work, but it definitely needs to ram in here to try and take the Seed Ram and sponge the Arboss fire at the same time. Decent few Seed Workshops kicking around the place. Three here, one up top. Send the ram in alone is not a good idea, but if you mass up, maybe five rams. Five rams is really cheap to mass up. Then he could really effectively do that. Skirmishers, maybe. Not so ideal as the Persians. They don't counter Hull with the Year too well when they don't even have Bracer. Melkor is pop capped. He is overboomed with 159 villagers, only 41 army. If it's all paladins, sure, that kind of explains itself, but. At the same time, of course, he is trying to get the skirmishers out and he does need to see drums. The skirmishers at this point are only blocking his population space. He can afford to delete some villagers. Where is he over boomed? But many... I would say his food economy is... Should be somewhat okay. The only reason it's staying quite high is because he just can't afford to make any paladins because it's filled with skirmishers. If it drops to maybe 55 and then he drops his lumberjacks maybe another 5 or 10 then he probably sorts his population out that way. Sending in these rams alone is just not a good idea. But, you know, quite strong play, uh, play to have the Seed Rams at this point. Hulled in the Seed Rams is just one of those combinations you just never really see. You could die to something like full hulled, but... Of course, Nikov is really compressed in here. Obdier is not too expensive though. These wood lines are going to be deniable though. If the wood lines are denied, then Hulldeers can definitely be stopped. Just by economy destruction. Without even having to raid. So we're going to see Melkor needs to kind of raid just to try and disrupt the economy. Melkor needs to be raided just to lose some of his overboom. Also Lightcap coming in here for the Borchkeys player. Nikov definitely not weak at all. He definitely knows how to uh, follow up. Two relics for each player. The third one, uh, fifth one is over here. Both players just casually sharing this gold in perfect harmony. But yeah, the skirmishers, they're just not a very good unit. I think, um... Hobbiters are too strong in the way they're too good against other units. So I think one way would be to increase the damage. Skirmishers need to the by one. The bonus damage. And possibly at the same time reduce Hobbiter attack by one. But increasing their bonus against cavalry. Like every type of cavalry by one. So it doesn't change that balance, but... Makes them worse against generic units. After Arson, I've always found Hobbs to be OP. Okay. 
I can never find Arabia to be fun because it's just the IY arena. Except it has more full wall and booming in it and it definitely has a lot more crushing in it. When I played it for the longest time it's just the worst game mode. Halberdier's coming in for a bit of a raid of course. They are going to be able to kill the Hussar that Milker is trying to defend with. I can still hear death, so there's probably some white calf kicking around this economy. 142 vills though. Not too many idols, but then again, Nikov, 25 idols, where are those? Scattered everywhere, that's going to be a nightmare to clean. Decent push though, he has this Arblast army. And he has a bunch of houses to defend it as well as bomb cannons. Yeah, but you can't say it's like yeah, better because the bad things are over quicker when there's more bad things. It's not um it's not kind of how reality works or anything. I have a feeling like 118 villagers, Nico's finally dropping to acceptable level sad trash spam, he's not even adding any more villagers. Definitely sorting out his idle situation though, he's trying to keep on top of that, he's definitely seems to be doing quite well. Running out of the wood lines though, I mean it's gonna get pushed from down here. And he has this wood line, this wood line a little bit here. But if this area gets pushed here, he gets pushed off these wood lines, and he's kind of run out of wood in general. Because this is now starting to get denied finally. In the middle here, I mean, it does look like he is making a half decent push, and he is still raiding from the side here. Milker's economy dropped 130 villagers, but now his military is skyrocketing at the same time because he's been, he's been able to afford to make it for ages. I mean, 1k food, 2.2k gold, does that not scream? Make some paladins. Vietnamese can easily win goths. The Rathans are actually not too bad against the Huskarls if you, um, they don't open with a castle and start making castle age Huskarls right away. The goth boom is too slow to be able to keep up with something like the enemies doing some really fast archer shots. You have to uh, be quite try hard as the goths to be able to stop that kind of thing. And of course you don't have the boom that you need to be able to make your spam late game. See it works from Nikov, he's trying to push over here and then some house from light cab. Melkor just already has a rax here though. I already even has a ram start denying this. These stables are easily not going to survive more hussars. Hussar's doing the rain over here, Nikov has dropped the population down to 90 villagers. Melkor's just keep adding in Hussar. If he manages to get some kills around here, that's going to be so much stuff dead. Yeah, but if the enemy's not going to die, if someone just makes a castle and like tries to attack him with 5 Huskars, it doesn't work like that. Whereas, ranged units are a lot better for that kind of thing. Unless, of course, golf goes crossbow and then, well, they're against better crossbows, so. But it looks like Nikov's about to lose his army up front here. Milker has basically no army as well, but Nikov's lost all his army. Just some Arbal sitting around, he has 45 military, a lot of it is just random halberdiers and light cap scars around the place, I feel. Very, very incoherent military here. Lots of idols, he only has 100 villagers now, he's been rebooming, but. Lots of idle trying to add more siege workshops. Just going to lose some of the R-Blast though. The house stars with the plus four are going to be able to deal with those quite easily. Also skirmishers? I don't understand the skirmishers still, but they do seem to be working at this point. He managed to spend a good one and a half K of his gold, probably on the bomb cannons. Over here, Nikov, probably trying to push this, but he just isn't making anything from the siege workshops. And of course, he just... Um, I think he needs to spend his military elsewhere, he has maybe too many halberdiers here to try and deal with this, he's losing the push up front because of it. So, um, yeah. I think Melkor has this game, he's pushing from all angles, I mean, maybe Nikov can recover this. If Nikov can push on both these sides, which is going to be very, very hard for him, then maybe he can do it. There's almost a fight over these co um, corners anymore, and this one's basically empty, and this one has a few buildings which maybe Nikov can deal with. 
You got losing a lot more economy though. Hussars here. Nothing defensive. Hussars over here. The hubs are a little bit far away. And Milgrim now here. And essentially no army from Nikov to deal with that. Nikov losing his edge over here as well. Nice game for Melkor. I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to cast. Melkor with a massive overboom, but gets paid off in the end. Bit more relic go for Nikov. Nikor did, uh, did have more relics for longer, yeah, two, and Melkor had zero one and none. Actually, I think he had one, then Milko got one. Ah, it doesn't matter. Timing's kind of reasonable. Melkor did go to Emp quite a bit later. He did decide to make a lot more Castle Age Knights. Probably did work out for him, to be honest, considering our last fight. Much more resources in general for Melkor, much better boom as the Persians. Similar KDs. But probably a decent bit more gold expensive units like Arblast. Whereas these are probably a bit more um, along the lines of skirmishers. Alright, so we moved to game number two in this uh, game number three today, but game number two in this mini series. Also, if you've not been around to be working on Vivli Arena season all summer, Prozini is going to use his own interpretation of the new map. So, if you actually subscribe to the mod on Vivli Mod Center for the Vivli Arena seasonal map, then it will automatically update to the summer variant. So if, as you're playing it, we're getting into summer, you can have the summer map now. So let's move on to the next game. And of course we've got to restart. Here we are as Nikov as the Chinese. With quite a nice Chinese start. I mean, getting on food by minute 20, not finishing the house, not the end of the world, but of course, getting Loom is quite important to get on Arabia, so it's really nice for the Chinese. So, yeah, Indians against Chinese. Indians is a really strong matchup. It's a bit because the economy bonus lets them do some really fast strategies, and of course, Chinese do tend to have a slower start. Of course, they do have the better economy, they do have the villager advantage, usually by up to two villagers. Of course, because they don't need to get Loom as well. They could be easily a villager behind, a villager ahead. Yeah, basically on par with one villager ahead plus Loom, so essentially two villagers ahead when Melkor gets Loom. So, you know, good economy, but they do definitely struggle with having a lack of food to start. They do need the uh, a little bit of time to get that, usually it gets towards feudal age. So they might have to up with maybe 23 pop, and, you know, they're not going to be quite as fast as a 20 pop sky rush from the Indian player, for example. Very nice save, especially when you're pushing deer like this. You might as well have uh, benefit your economy even stronger as the Indians. Probably sky rush here from Milker. He did have some really nice man arms builds, like 20 pop man arms for the Indians when he was practicing for King of the Desert too. Those were some of the most impressive build lords I've ever seen on Arabia. When I was watching him practice for those games. Probably scouts though, he does like to open with the scouts on both Arabia and Arena. Nikov can also open scouts, he can open with usually never man arms as Chinese. You tend to be up maybe a little bit late, maybe your economy is struggling for the food a little bit. I have seen it done, but it's not something I would ever see done too often. Yeah, 20 pop man arms, and it worked really well. Like, I was shocked when I tried it. Interesting enough, he did go for him with the start. Guess how, so he's just gonna cancel that. I don't 
he was just late to building house. 21 pop. Interesting. Nikov is advancing to feudal age. He already has Limpy is 22 population, 22 pop getting there 1922. Of course, the optimal time to be up is 10.05 for uh, 22 pop, so he's doing very, very good. Sending Filter forward. Okay, that's some 2k lag. I'm gonna have to reinstall the game. His food economy is looking a little bit lackluster. Nikov's map though, the gold maybe not so great. He can actually TC that. Mm, yeah, it's, that's definitely wallable. All that. Well that, that. Bit of a backward line, bit of a backward line here. If he was there and then there. Not too bad map if he looks on a decent wall, uh, wall off. Stone maybe not so great though. It looks like we're gonna see four tower plus trash. Very, very common old school strategy. But let's see, Mokro's already building his counter tower. He doesn't have too many villagers over here though. He's not building a second building, no no range, nothing like that. He's sending some more villagers forward. He's gonna try to get this tower up. The trash is not gonna... The trash should work, I mean that should be able to be denied. He's not been using a scout though. Try and mix in a bit of everything, just to try and take that down. So Melko just running out from under the tower, the skirmishes and spears are not going to be able to do too much. Melko are kind of to attack the tower from the side. Nikov noticed he's trying to quick wall off. Is he going to be able to? Nope. Ran the villager decides to walk around that palisade and try and build that one. Absolutely class pathing there. And this tower's going to go down. Milker better build his stable. He's been housed at 25 pot for a while. He is three villagers behind at this point. But, yeah. Damn. Successfully averted that rush. Very, very nice. Finally did decide to build a house. Apologize if I fall asleep and lay on my keyboard when I hit uh, the tap key. <clears throat> Happens all the time. I'm probably going to make this the last game I'm going to cast because I do plan to play a bit of Doom later. I've not had too much time to play today. Tomorrow I'll have some time. I played a TG on Vibler Earth today. I was playing 1v1s yesterday. I plan to play TG today. Maybe some 1v1s, but I decided not to. I'll probably play some 1v1s tomorrow. Okay. Gotta to farm that 2k rating back out of the clutches of death. Then, uh. Yeah. Sunday will go as planned. Usual uh, arena stream. Lots of trash, but this is already walled off quite significantly. And this is. A bit of a shabby wall, but it's it counts, doesn't it? <laughs> it's enough to protect his gold. So four villagers ahead for the Chinese player. Of course, maybe if the Indian player does get up fast enough, then you could add TC and boom, easier for Indians. I would never have casted that TG. Just Harut tilted me so hard with how bad he played for his rating. It was, I didn't realize we're in a 15 next TG. This is what I should have said, but I said not to be that salty about it. Don't go against some fill snipes though. He might be able to actually even recover his villager disadvantage. Yeah, two fills. No, just the one so far. Lots of farms being denied here for Nikov though. More scouts coming as well. <clears throat> well, yeah, but spring is supposed to be good. If you're supposed to be like good at something and then... Oh, never mind. That's just... <laughs> I had salt to pick. Whereas that game is just a random noob game that no one cares about. Nikov trying to break him with the trash milk or quick wall in that. Uh, I mean, he's going to be able to go up quite soon. 
looking over here, I mean, if he builds a market, then it might be quite easy for Nikov to up. Yeah, there's his market. Also, we'll just get sniped though. Chinese do in general get a lot stronger as the game goes on, especially because they do have combinations help. The Chokunu can be very, very strong. The Camel's not going to survive that with the one extra Pierce armor. Not too easily, anyway. But of course, what are we going to see in Castle Age? Cavalry Archers, we see in Archery range. Cavalry Archers is definitely a possibility. Maybe Cavalry Arch, Camel. Camel is really strong for the Indians because they should pierce armor. Good for the raiding as well. But against Chinese, Chinese can even... Yeah, Chinese can just add their own Camel and they be equal. Except, of course, Chinese do have cheaper techs. I mean, obviously, the plus one, plus two armors, the attacks are going to be cheaper for the Chinese. So maybe they could get those and be an advantage. I mean, Nico's already getting bloodlines. Quick wall on that off. This guy's might die here. At least in the most part, but they're still causing a lot of damage. Melkor does not actually have too much in the way of a wood line right now. This could be like one skirmisher could deny half the wood line. But he does still have a back wood, and he does have another gold if he needs it. He's going crossbow. Unless he adds CA soon. Two stables? Is he just going to make some archers on the way up, try and deny something like... Ah! I completely forgot this game, but now I remember. Add a bunch of crossbow, then you've got quite an easy snipe for the camels, and then just add your own camel. It's like having a counter to camels that isn't pike. So obviously making skirmishers is a lot less effective. Whereas crossbows can kill both the camels and spears. Lots more armor here for Nikov, though. Extra camels coming in from Melkor, though. Yeah, Nikov. Nikov less army there. He's going to lose that fight, but he's not behind. He's three pillars ahead, even. With two TCs, soon to be three, even. Ugh, need to stop you on him. I don't understand why he would GG that. Sure, he'd have to go maybe a little bit further for a safer woodline. But he's going to be on a better economy. I mean, Melkor here is still only one TC. Being two TCs against this, not that much less army, making the skirmishes maybe a little bit suicidal. There's still load one, so just going straight camel should have been fine. Hmm. I don't understand why he would GG with this map though. He's in a better position as it is, and his map is not too bad. Maybe he wanted stone for very early Chokunu for some kind of thing, but I don't kind of see why he would prioritize that right away rather than just try and focus on the Castle Age Camel fight. And if he won that, then he could easily win the game without Chokunu. Or even the techs, like Great Wall, the BBT, whatever, but this isn't an NBL game. Maybe Nikov is just on tilt. So there are two more games to the series, but I'm not going to cast them today.